welcome to ILTV's Evening Update. I'm Aaron Porras, here with the latest news from Israel. Earlier today, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with Austrian Chancellor Christian Kern. During his first official visit to the region, the Chancellor attended the official Yom HaShoah memorial ceremony and toured the Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum. During the meeting, Prime Minister Netanyahu praised his counterpart, saying, quote, Mr. Chancellor, it's a pleasure to see you again. We commemorated together Holocaust Remembrance Day, and you were right there with your wife, and it was deeply significant. You are being there, and also the fact that you have taken a consistent position against Holocaust denial, against anti-Semitism. You've been very forthright about the historical legacy and the historical imperatives that the Holocaust requires of all of us. And I want to thank you for this and express our deep appreciation for the people of Israel to you." End quote. In related news, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has made good on his threat to cancel his meeting with Germany's Foreign Minister Sigmar Gabriel. Gabriel is here in Israel for a two-day visit, where he had been scheduled to meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu, President Reuven Rivlin, members of the Palestinian Authority, and at least two Israeli rights groups. However, after learning that Gabriel had been planning to meet with the left-wing Israeli NGOs, Netanyahu cancelled the meeting. When the announcement came, Gabriel had been meeting with President Rivlin in Jerusalem. He then expressed disappointment at the Prime Minister's decision, but said, quote, We are committed to the friendship, partnership, and special relationship with Israel, and nothing will change that, end quote. Opposition leader Isaac Herzog warned that this ultimatum could, quote, seriously harm Israel's ties to Europe's largest economy and a true friend of Israel, end quote. Knesset member Tsipi Livni went further, saying, quote, Israel and the IDF have nothing to hide, and the PM is supposed to face and answer, and there are answers, any complaint by any person or body in Israel and abroad, end quote. Yair Lapid, the head of the Eshetid party, defended the move, however, writing on Twitter that Netanyahu should not have canceled the meeting, but that he has a right to be angry. He wrote, quote, if Netanyahu were to meet radical leftist organizations in Germany, Chancellor Angela Merkel would be no less incensed. The group Americans for Peace Now has canceled its annual trip because of the country's new boycott law. The law passed last month bars entry to people who are found in support of the Global Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement, or BDS, and for those who support a limited boycott that singles out Israeli settlements in the West Bank. The organization canceled its trips in fear that its members would be stopped and detained at Israel's Ben Gurion airport. The group has been leading study tours throughout Israel and the occupied territories for the past 30 years. The organization's study tours include meetings with politicians, security experts, civil society, and peace activists, writers, and artists from both Israel and the Palestinian territories. This will be the first time that the organization has ever canceled a trip. The Population, Immigration, and Border Authority of Israel, or PIBA, has recently issued a letter to tour operators in the Jewish state requesting that they refrain from taking any tourists into the West Bank. The letter was quickly annulled, though, when PIBA said the message was issued in error. The letter, shown yesterday on Israel's Channel 2 News, reads, quote, Beginning May 15, 2017, you will be required to attach to every request for scheduling a tour group in Israel a commitment form not to enter Judea and Samaria, end quote. It continued, saying that the tour application would not be processed without said commitment. In PIBA's later revocation of the missive, they explained that the ban was meant to be focused only on Palestinian Authority-controlled areas, which makes more sense, as a blanket ban on tours entering the West Bank would have severely impacted tourists visiting Jewish settlements, as well as Christians on pilgrimage to important religious sites. PIBA has promised to reissue a letter to tour operators, clarifying the situation. In a fairly shocking revelation, former Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Ya'alon stated on Saturday that the Islamic State terror group in the Syrian Golan apologized to Israel. He said, quote, There was one case recently where Daesh opened fire and apologized, end quote. Daesh being the Arabic nickname for the Islamic State. Though the former defense minister didn't offer many more details, the aforementioned attack was most likely in reference to a skirmish along the northern Israeli border with Syria last November. Apparent Islamic State-affiliated fighters opened fire on IDF troops, resulting in a brief gunfight, followed by Israeli airstrikes and tank fire in response. Four ISIS fighters were killed. Yalon's commitments were made whilst explaining Israeli policy with respect to Syria. The two countries are technically still at war, but Israel primarily takes a non-interventionist stance. The exceptions to this are when Israel retaliates against spillover violence that hits the Israeli Golan Heights. That's all for now. Stay tuned on ILTV.TV for our main daily broadcast playing after this. I'm Aaron Porras and see you next time with our morning briefing from Israel at 8 a.m. Eastern Time.